What's up guys, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! KG here, and I'm bringing you another Phoenix Raid as a turn A part. So, uh, last episode, Larry is going to, uh, present testimony about what happened. Apparently something else happened because we technically have a guilty verdict on our hands right now, and that's not good. So, we'll see what Larry has to say. Uh, alright, so let's get started with this. December 27th, 10.35 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. This isn't going to go well, I can tell already. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Great, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. <laughs> oh yeah, he's probably like, you know what? I'm sick of this crap. <laughs> Karma didn't even have to have time to prep this witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Yeah, really, I forgot about that. How he's so perfect, Von Karma. Alright. That night, I was out on a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and I uh, found it. So I was quietly slipped the boat back in that the rental shop dock. Gosh, that was really hard to say. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Okay. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any matter, Mr. Roy, you may begin your course examination. Yes, Your Honor. Well, what's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Yeah, really. I mean, you can't get any worse than a guilty verdict right now. <laughs> That night I was out on a boat on the lake. I guess we're gonna have to press. I'm just kinda scared though because I got penalized at one time. I'm kinda scared. Something wrong, Mr. Roy. There were so many things wrong I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went out in the boat. By that time everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something. I er, found it. Looking for something? Er, yeah. Mr. Bonds, what was it you were looking for? Oh, wow. What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. You know, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if that was the truth. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. I can't- I forgot how menacing that voice that I do for him is. Gosh, I can't even go, like, two episodes. Alright, here we go. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. I think I said it perfect this time. <laughs> around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figured I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12. Yeah. You're not sure. Hey, don't give me that face! I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? Watches these days, Larry. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Hold it. Where did that the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. Hold it. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? I know, really, what the hell? Then what do you- I have not seen it. Order! Order! Well, Mr. Botts! Whoa, whoa! Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hmm. <laughs> I hate how I do that. It makes me- it makes it all come on my- Hmm. I can't even do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Yeah, that was... No, it's okay. I don't want you to feel bad. Okay. You sound like... Oh, okay. Looking for something. You found it. Heard a bang. He looked out and the boat. So after heard that single gunshot, he went single gunshot. Weren't there two? I think. Yeah. I, 
like what Lana said, I heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. There were two gunshots, not one. Uh oh. Well, wait a sec, Larry. W what? You only heard one bang. You're sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lana Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me like nice and stuff, okay? Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Bots! What? You only had one gunshot. Are you sure? Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude! Oh, my headphones! What? <laughs> oh my god, Larry! <laughs> <laughs> so he might not have the gunshot. <laughs> oh, okay. What a, what a hint's not that bearing. M Mr. Watts, you were listening to a radio on earphones. Y yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor this shoddy testimony. Well, Mr. Roy, should he continue the testimony? Oh, oh God, uh, in a way, yes, but in a way, no. But if we say no, we're gonna lose our big chance, so please, for the love of everything. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah, nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Doing well, Mr. Bonds. Please give your old testimony and be sure to include details like your radio! Right! Leave it to me! I wouldn't- I mean- God, that sounded so stupid. I wouldn't if there were any way out of this, believe me. That sounded really stupid how I said that. At first, okay, what Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to a real booming loud like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. Dear God, he said real loud to- <sighs> You were listening to your radio at a high volume! Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? Okay, so yes, they are definitely are in the States. <laughs> I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection! Wait, Your Honor! The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me, DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Th very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. I like how I'm so forceful, too. I'm very confident when I talk. <laughs> it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Oh, did you have fiancé? So, you turned on the radio? Right! I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve! Alone? That was a weird Christmas little sneak. I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to an old request show on the radio, see? Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor! Objection sustained! The witness was listening to the radio. That's all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Bolts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to a real booming loud like. Real booming loud? Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yup. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. He didn't even move his mouth when I said that. <laughs> 
But I'm sure I heard that gunshot! Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. And that's a clue. What did he say? Mr. Wright, please cease this pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Montgomery has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. You know what, we don't have anything to go on, so we should care. <laughs> we should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, w well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Boy, very well. Mr. Bots, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just what she said. Hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. What? Okay. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. Gotta press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. So wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see something. Let's go over some things. Time of death sometime on the 25th or 20, 24th or 25th. Okay. Um, take it automatically on December 25th at 12.15 a.m. That was the moment of the shot. Well, gosh darn. Butter my butt and call me a biscuit. I think I found it. And that was pretty easy. It says, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot, meaning it wasn't Christmas. It was Christmas Eve, but this photo says that the shot was taken at 12.15 a.m. I'm a genius! Alright, here we go. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you know that I don't scare that easy. There's something the matter, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed? And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve! That won't seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's, I mean, ooh, god damn. Ooh, calm down, Phoenix, okay. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Holt's camera. Or, I actually think it was Phoenix's part. It doesn't sound... Oh, never mind, it is his part. 12.25, 15 minutes off to midnight on Christmas Day! This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor! Yeah, really. Order, order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses had gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he had a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. W what? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Bolton's claim he had the gunshot before midnight? Well... If he's wrong, then this whole case gets thrown out the window. Um, but if he's right, then I can't prove it, because I can't prove that he was, it was right. Well, if it's a, a DJ saying it's before Christmas, I mean, damn. And plus, plus, I noticed something back in a couple episodes. Plus, this was a murder weapon, and you can see right here, it says fired three times. So, the two gun, the two gunshots, and I was wondering about why it was fired three times and nobody brought that up. So here we go, I guess we found it. So he's right, it was fired three times, so... That's my proof. <laughs> Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight! Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. And that's gonna be the gun because of the three times five. I'm assuming. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. 
That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. What a, what a! Hmm, I guess that one makes sense out of yesterday's testimonies. Bah, you waste our time again with your empty statements. Yes, the pistol was fired three times. But do you have any proof that it was fired before midnight? Do you have proof that the witness didn't just think he heard something? Indeed. Well, Mr. Roy, there's no turning back now. Do you have evidence that proves that there was a gunshot before midnight? Do you have evidence that proves Mr. Bots wasn't just hearing things? You know what, man? I give up. I don't know anymore. Let's see. Not the camera. Autopsy, like, photo. Second. Wait a minute. The second, like, photo. It. That's right! Lotta gave this, and it shows an empty lake. Just thinking- Okay, 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 okay. I gotta calm down a little bit. Alright. This was taken at 11.50pm. What if that was the shot that Larry heard? Which it probably is. And that camera takes photos when a gunshot rings out. Or that night when it was programmed to take photos when a gunshot rang out. So, why does it show an empty lake? Because that there, was a, there was a gunshot before those two guys were on the lake. God of a genius! Look at this photograph! This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh yeah? Hmm. Well, there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all! What do you mean? God damn it, Your Honor, do I have to put it up for everything? I got pieces together for him and everything. Jeez, how did you get your judge license? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, there was a gunshot at the time that Larry claims. What a, what a! Hmm, that won't make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor! Y yes Mr. Roy? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. I don't understand or where I'm going with this, but let's truck along. What do you mean, Mr. Roy? Tisk tisk tisk. So, you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. He's like, oh, contraire. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. Okay. So I'll discuss it three times. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well? The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. 
Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake! That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat! Uh... The murderer and Hammond? Edgeworth and... The murderer, Edgeworth and Hammond. 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 It can't be Edgeworth and Hammond, it can't be, because the guy fell off and Edgeworth is... I... I... It can't be him. Because that would make it look like Edgeworth killed him then. Edgeworth and the murderer. But someone fell off the boat. Okay, the murderer and Hammond... Hammond... I don't even know how to say it like... It can't be Hammond because Edgeworth was definitely on that boat. He said so himself in the Gunner's Prince, so he was... Definitely on that boat, and the cutscene definitely on that boat, so it can't be the top one. It can't be the murderer and Hammond. If we say it was Edgeworth and Hammond, that makes it look like Edgeworth killed him, unless there was a sniper, but that's the ruling of the possibility that there's no sniper. So the only other option is Edgeworth and the murderer, but that doesn't make sense because we don't know who the murderer is. But it can't be the other two choices. Oh well, roll with it. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer! After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond had met Edgeworth. Oh yeah, that makes sense, okay. <laughs> what? What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Okay, it's definitely... It's not Edgeworth. We're not saying that. A lot of heart. It can't be her because she was over in her camping area thing. But what if we say I don't know? I don't know, man. I'm starting to get the hunch that maybe it's a freaking old man. Wait a minute. What if it is an old guy? We don't know his name, so... I'm starting to get the hunch that it's that goddamn old guy. He's so freaking suspicious and insane. He's like he's drunk. So it can't be Edgeworth. It's not a lot of hearts, so the only option is I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. Y you don't know? Bah! Again you waste my time! I don't know because he never told us! Oh, yeah, that- oh, damn, then, yeah, we're on the right track. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man! At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Wait, where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake, then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not in a boat? What? Wait, well, then, where did the murder take place? I don't know. Show the judge where the murderer really took place. In his shop? I don't know. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he can meet with the victim without see anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony if you will. <coughs> that little diagram's cute. It's funny. <laughs> That night, he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. Okay. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at that time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat shop. Uh-oh, we're piecing this together. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. Maybe. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Okay. Look at that face, he was like, oh. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Okay. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then, who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? It wasn't Edgeworth. 
It has to be the boat shop caretaker, but why would he fire a pistol? Okay, it's definitely not Edgeworth. There's no reason why he would kill an old guy, so it's the boat shop caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Because the first shot missed to create a witness. Okay, so far, okay. So far what we have is he shot twice. And he missed on both. Why would he miss twice? And apparently from the cutscene, someone's falling out of the boat. So if it's a boat shop caretaker guy, why would he miss twice and then just fall out of the boat? Uh, to create a witness, maybe, because it worked. Lotta was a witness, technically, kind of. I don't know. Um, I'm going to select the choice uh, to create a witness in the next episode because I don't want to go on too long with this. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, favorite, subscribe for more, and I will see you.